my name is Anastasia Poole, and the topic of my talk today is wide azimuth acquisition with radial domain interpolation, fluvial morphology interpretation. The aim of this talk is to demonstrate how an integrated approach helps to unlock fluvial morphology reservoir potential using seismic. I will talk about reservoir geology and economics evaluation, survey design, acquisition, processing, and inversion. And as an early teaser, on this slide, we can see how much improvement we can achieve with new full azimuth seismic acquisition in proce and processing in comparison to the legacy seismic. In this talk, I will show the importance of the integrated approach where we start with understanding of the reservoir geological and economical setting. And we use this information to design this optimal seismic survey to achieve those objectives so within economical means and uh, during the reasonable time frame. We will use the state-of-art seismic acquisition followed by state-of-art seismic inversion ready processing. And in this processing, we use inversion not only as a final product, but also to QC and guide the different data processing stages all the way through the processing. So we get the optimal product in the end, not only for inversion, but also suitable for advanced seismic interpretation and attributes extraction. In the end, the objective is to gain the increased reservoir understanding and thus reduce the drilling risk. So what is the formula of success? To get the final high resolution data sets suitable for attributes extraction, we need to understand geology and economics, we uh, need to get the optimal design. We need to have state-of-art seismic acquisition and focus on quality, followed by amplitude offset and azimuth preserving processing. So let's start with understanding of geology and economics. Uh, the survey located in remote and environmentally sensitive area of Australia, which poses uh, certain challenges, not only for seismic acquisition, but also for oil and gas exploration. For example, you cannot use uh, pattern drilling or carpet shooting for seismic exploration. The geological objectives are also challenging. The primary objective is mapping fluvial systems cutting through deep Permian coals for conventional and tight gas. We also would like to be able to do attribute analysis for sweet spot detection at early Permian unconventional shell play. Using their primary target as an example, let's have a look what we are looking for. The main target is fluvial channel systems, and you can see it's reasonably a big target we're trying to look for. What we are really interested at is those small white sand bodies, which are basically the sand banks, which will create very good quality reservoir. As we can see from this picture, we will need quite a reasonable quality picture to be able to find those small features within the main fluvial channel system. So if we reduce the resolution, we still can see the main, the main body of a fluvial system, but we lost all the details. If you look at the corresponding seismic examples, you can see that on the top right, we have much more chances to see the individual details on, the big, on that picture than in the picture on the bottom right. So to summarize, we are looking for relatively small meandering multi-zone channels which have low acoustic impedance contrast and they are situated within high acoustic impedance contrast coals, so they will be quite difficult to find. There also, reservoir quality varies from poor to good depending if you're drilling into the shaly sand or the pure sand banks. This puts the stringent requirements for seismic design, so we have to come up with optimal design to be able to reach those objectives. So what do we need from seismic? We need good target illumination, we need good signal to noise, high resolution, and rock properties extraction. How do we achieve it? We have square patch, which will provide a full azimuth survey with no preferences in any direction for good target illumination for all directions. Also, dense point source, point receiver sampling, not only provided sampling not only adequate for signal but also for noise resulting in good signal to noise and high resolution. Long offsets and broadband sweep focus not only on high but also on low frequencies will enable better rock properties extraction. 
So let's compare how these new requirements are compared to the old legacy 3D data typically acquired in this area. Here we can see the spread diagrams on the top and offset and azimuth plots on the bottom. And first observation, we can see here that offsets are not very big and also the survey is quite narrow azimuth. If you compare it to the survey design proposed for the new survey to meet those objectives, you can see massive increase in, in the size of the patch. So we have much longer offsets. And also those offsets are uniform in all directions. So we have full azimuth survey in all directions of up to 4.2 kilometers. As a result, we have three times better spatial sampling and 240 times trace density. So we can see it's a significant effort. So to be able to achieve uh, and shoot the survey in non-geological time, you need to have a certain special acquisition techniques. And you need to shoot at least 5,000 shots a day. We not only improved the overall size of the patch, but we also improved the microgeometry. The macrogeometry, basically the line spacing, is limited by the environmental constraints. So between the legacy 3D and new seismic survey, it's comparable. It's 320 meters versus 325 meters. The main difference here, instead of relying on source and receiver arrays and sparse source and receiver point spacing for noise detonation in the field, we are proposing to have much denser point source point receiver sampling and rely on data processing for better noise attenuation. Now we need to follow up our design with state-of-art seismic acquisition and the main focus is on quality. The main features of seismic acquisition uh, to be able to fulfill those stringent constraints are we have a small layout crews there each person can focus on individual sensor planting and plant those sensors away from the obvious sources of noise. It sounds like a common sense, but for example, planting the geophones is not common in Australia. Also, by the fact that you're actually moving your source or receiver location to the better location to get the better signal, you need to implement certain techniques such as real-time surveying so you know where did you move them. Also, it means you have put the certain requirements onto the data processing later on, as you will ha have to be able to process this data. For example, it has to be non-uniform processing. Also, you need to have broadband sources and receivers, so you need to emit the broadband energy, focusing not only on the high, but also on the low frequencies, to enable the inversion, and also you need to be able to record that. Next step is the data processing. So, once you acquired all that data with your optimal design, you need to make sure you preserve all this valuable amplitude offset and azimuth information during the all processing stages. Let's have a look in details. So we first start with coordinate-driven noise attenuation. So we know where all those sources and detectors have been positioned in the field exactly. So we use this information in noise attenuation. We also use geophysical information for noise estimation and we focus on the low frequencies during the processing from early stages of processing. Next stage is preparation for migration. And here is the main difference what we're proposing for new processing. We output data into the regular spaced offset and azimuth givers, so we preserve offset and azimuth information through migration and post-migration processing, we also utilize it after the migration. For example, during the velocity analysis, we use azimuthal velocities, and we process all the givers, offset and azimuth givers individually, which then gives us a choice. We can either sum them all together and get high resolution stack for advanced seismic interpretation, or we can keep them separate for, and put them into the AVO as that inversion for advanced seismic attribute extraction. We can see that all this hard work actually does pay off. With the under, un, same underlying seismic data, the original, there is a significant improvement uh, between original fast-track OVT processing and latest processing with radial interpolation. And we can see improvement in both temporal and spatial resolution. Here we can see that uh, while the overall features are the same, if we zoom into this horizon slice, which is main target, we can see 
very, very small details within the male fluvial channel system. So the position of the fluvial channel system is the same, but now we can target those individual details and it will give us opportunity to place, to do the smart well placement later on. So how did we get there? The original data set was acquired with 325 meter source and receiver line space in orthogonal geometry. It's quite sparse, but we cannot go denser due to the environmental constraints. This type of geometry results in irregular offset and azimuth sampling. We can do OVT processing to limit offset and azimuth mixing, but there is a near offset mi uh, missing, and if we would like to do any attribute analysis, we will struggle. One way to fix this problem or to improve the situation is to do source and receiver line interpolation. It's a quite common approach these days. It improves the offset and azimuth sampling. It results in reduced offset and azimuth mixing, and we also start to infill the near offsets. What we are proposing is if we're going into the trouble of interpolating the data set anyway, using 5D interpolation to preserve offset and azimuth information, we might as well interpolate it to regular offset and azimuth sampling, to regular so-called domain gathers. This will eliminate offset and azimuth mixing through further stages of processing for individual azimuth and offset gather processing. More than that, not only we filled the uh, near offsets, we also starting to see the much more subtle details such as azimuthal energy and multiples, so we can address those issues later on in processing. So what does it give us in the end? What we're expecting is to have high resolution data set and which will be suitable for seismic attributes. Let's have a look if that is the case. So we go back to the comparison between the narrow azim of seismic, which has less effort, and the new full azim of seismic, which had significantly more effort. The seismic looks comparable at first, but if you start looking into the details, you can see the well tie is much better and the overall balance of the seismic is a better in the new full azimuth processing. The major striking difference is actually when you start extracting the seismic attributes, when you invert the data into relative acoustic impedance, you can, now you can see that its resolution is significantly improved and well tie is much better with new full azimuth seismic acquisition and processing. What it enables us to do now with new high quality data is extract those seismic attributes and then try to map those channels. Here's an example of such an attribute extraction from the post-stack seismic volume. And you can see the meandering channel body meandering through the seismic. Alternatively, we can use pre-stack seismic data and invert it and try to extract, to correlate it with a well and extract it for rock properties. Then you use this information and try to map it back into your seismic attributes volume and identify the zones of a potential interest with an aim to reduce the drilling risk. So I believe I demonstrated in this presentation that integrated approach helps to unlock the fluvial morphology reservoir potential using seismic. And you need to follow this process through starting from reservoir geology and economics evaluation through seismic survey design to state-of-art seismic acquisition and processing, all the way to inversion and advanced seismic interpretation. I'd like to thank the management of Santos Drill Search Energy and Schlumberger for giving their support and publishing and presenting this material. In addition, I would like to thank many people who worked on this project during acquisition, processing and early interpretation stages, specifically Phil Bisbee, Jennifer Graham, Karant Morgan, Paul Russ, Michael Gilles and Malcolm Francis. Thank you for your attention and see you soon.